The ancient world still holds many secrets to which we have no answers. One of them is the seemingly effortless chiseling of perfect stones used in pyramids and temples all over the world. Today we'll take a look at some of those stones whose origins lie in ancient Egypt and which even today still inspire the utmost fascination. We'll try to reveal some of the secrets around them. One of those rocks carries a very special inscription, the so-called Famine Stella. This is an ancient engraved granite rock located at the southern tip of Sahel Island near the city of Aswan in southern Egypt. Thirty-two columns of mysterious text were engraved into this enormous stone mass. The American Egyptologist Charles Edwin Wilbur discovered it in 1889. But it wasn't until a few years later that the engravings were translated by several experts, and they came up with varying interpretations. The text tells us Djoser, the pharaoh of the Third Dynasty. One of the main concerns of this monarch was what the prevailing famine was causing and could continue to do to the land. The Nile had dried up at that time and provided too little water. That is why this inscription is also called the Famine Stella. After some time, the pharaoh summoned Imhotep and asked him about the causes of such an affliction. He was advised to ask the Lord of the Nile Spring, the god Knum, for the end of hunger. The Famine Stella mentions the three most influential personalities of Egyptian civilization at that time. First, the pharaoh Djoser, who lived around 2650 BC. He commissioned the Steppe Pyramid of Saqqara to be built which is considered to be the first pyramid of the empire, although some experts don't see it that way. The stella also mentions Imhotep, scribe and architect of the Pyramid of Djoser. He was a universal scholar of various scientific disciplines and even achieved the status of a god among the people. And finally, the god Knum, from whom the sunlight emerged at the beginning of time and who's the one who gave life to the world. He was regarded as the creator who molded the bodies of men and gods with the clay of the Nile. Interestingly, this myth also appears in the Bible and is a story that is repeated often in the histories of ancient cultures around the world. Everyone agrees that people were made of materials such as stone, corn, or clay. The Famine Stella contains 32 columns with hieroglyphs whose text is divided into five chapters. Columns 11 and 12 reveal the place where materials for the construction of temples and pyramids could be found. The eastern part of Elephantine contains all the minerals and crushed stones needed for agglomeration, including all the materials necessary for the construction of the temple, from the pyramids of the king to all the statues. These materials can be found in the vicinity of Knum and his surroundings. But the most interesting is in columns 18 to 20, where we can read how Knum teaches Djoser how to build temples for the gods out of stones. The God who stands before me said to me, I am Knum, your creator. My arms surround you to maintain the balance of your body. I am the one who gave you the rare minerals so that the construction of the temples or the reconstruction of the ruins will be carried out because I am the master who does this. I am the self-proclaimed Knum. Creator of the whole world, leader of all mankind. Although no one was able to translate it at first, the names of the chemical and mineral products used in construction are found in columns 15, 16, and 17. Is it possible that these elements were used to make artificial stones? The French chemist Joseph Davidovitz said back in 1979 that the stones of the pyramids of Egypt were produced by a technique called formed stones. They were made from geopolymers as a kind of concrete and not from chiseled stone, as it's claimed in official history. With this technique, they were able to make the stones where the temple was built, and they didn't have to hire thousands of workers to transport these gigantic stone blocks. 
However, the famine stella is not irrefutable proof of how the pyramids were built. Its reading merely offers different interpretations. Moreover, it was probably reworked in a later period, which means that it's rather a collection of legends of the time. Nevertheless, many of these legends have a true background and it's possible that Djoser really did receive very precise and advanced instructions to build some temples. As you see, there's still many more puzzles to solve. For example, who were these gods who delivered this knowledge to Djoser? And where did they come from?